So one area I want to learn more about with regards to Norway is the education system. I'm a father of two young children. My son is just turned four years old actually. He goes to kindergarten, really enjoys it. It's a private kindergarten here in Malaysia and it's a good level of education. So far he's still young, uh, but I want to know more about Norway and in particular I'm going to be starting with Norwegian kindergarten because yeah of course I've got that experience already with my own son so I want to see what a Norwegian kindergarten is like how Norway educates young children uh, you can tell me what you think about the Norwegian education system about Norwegian kindergarten have you had children in this system before how did you feel about it was there any good things any bad things about it tell me in the comments uh, but yeah, let's watch this one and find out. Norway's outdoor children. This is a tale of two kindergartens in Norway where, unlike Scotland, children spend the bulk of their time outside. Okay, I didn't realise this had any sort of connection to Scotland as well. So, I'm from Scotland originally. I live in Asia. I've lived here for 12 years. So I'm interested obviously because I went to school in Scotland, I went, it wasn't kindergarten I went to, I went to nursery which is just a similar thing at a similar age. So I'm really interested to see the comparison, but she mentions yet you spend a lot of time outdoors. When I went to nursery, it was all indoors, my son is mostly indoors, they do have some outdoor activities but as you can imagine the weather here is 30 degrees Celsius every day, it's very warm sometimes, it's, they're not able to go outside but this looks fun for children and evidently they love it <coughs> wow. each norwegian child has the right to a kindergarten place from the age of one and now they have the right to a day a week outside too wow so from the age of one they can go to kindergarten myself and my wife made a decision that our son wouldn't start until he was three we still wanted him to be at home with with us uh, or with my wife and allow us to develop him by we, we did a lot of educational activities and so on but just be at home with one of us and have that focus until he was three then put him into kindergarten so he can have that uh, access to other children be able to work on his communication with other children and so on but to have that one day outdoor as well, I think that's a great thing. It's so health, such a healthy lifestyle so early in the child's life. And yeah, if you have children, tell me when you sent them to kindergarten. Did you, did you send them as early as one year old? This is a site I don't think we'd see in Scotland somehow. Uh, we're at the Budin 4-H farm near Birda in northern Norway. And the idea is to try and connect children with their natural environment. Uh, the, the kids here are from a school and from a kindergarten. And the kindergarten's been here all day. As you can see, there's snow. It's been snowing very heavily today. It's been minus one, minus two at times. Uh, the kids are perfectly equipped for this weather. In fact, they're better equipped than most of the adults standing around here. And they've been out all day for three hours at a time playing in the snow. They take their, uh, their lunch in a little house outside and they spend the bulk of their time absolutely fascinated by the animals in this farm, which they're allowed to touch, feed, play with and generally mess around with. That's fantastic. I've never seen anything like this before in any other country. I mean, as I mentioned, the benefit, firstly, yeah, get about getting that outdoor lifestyle, just breathing fresh air for a day as a young child, being able to explore a different environment rather than just staying inside in a, inside a classroom, provides so many benefits for young children at this age, whether it is things like fitness, whether it's just learning so many different skills uh, physically as well, but to like be so close to animals and things as well, that must be such an enjoyable experience for children. As she mentioned, she compared it to Scotland. 100% we don't have anything any, like anywhere near close to this. Pigs, sheep, cows and hens, all part of a typical day for these children, who certainly know by the end of it that eggs come from hens. And the degree to which they see the whole natural process is something that is quite extraordinary for us in Scotland where we seem to have become very limited, very worried 
What if, what if the kids picked up an infection? What if one of the animals bit them? What if, but what if children continue to be so completely divorced from their own natural surroundings? Mm. Is that not something we should worry about? Yeah, I, I'm definitely not that sort of parent who worries about getting infections or like get picking viruses, getting viruses or anything like that. For me, I'm a believer in being exposed to as much different elements as possible in order to build like the immune system, to build experience as well, to be in that sort of close contact with these sort of things. Is, as I mentioned, every second they're learning. Uh, and as you say, compared to Scotland, not just Scotland, but the UK, they're so like health and safety conscious. They don't want anybody to be hurt in case they get sued or anything like that. This just seems more natural. And look how much they enjoy it as well. So fun, man. <laughs> so here we are uh, a little bit further along. Tell me where we're, we are and where we're about to go. Um, now we are staying at uh, outside the kindergarten. Where? Um, House. And we're going to go a little bit further in the forest and then go to our first base. To find the kids? To find yes. the kids. The, the kids, kids are there now. Do they have accidents? Um, not more than other kindergartens. Right. And uh, there's just no danger associated with them being outside like this? No, we have to count them. So we we'll make <laughs> sure we have all there. But we are doing it. We have uh, good routines. We have a lot of routines uh, yeah. regarding safety both inside and outside. But you don't get parents who say, these are my little babies, I can't help them out in the snow, it's too cold. <laughs> oh no. No, 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 they say they have to get out in the yeah. snow. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. They do everybody. That's a, such a great mentality to, to have as a parent. Put your kid out there, don't be scared. The thing she's saying about kids falling over and hurting themselves, even inside the house, they can still do that, man. My son is pretty mad, very active running, climbing over everything, always falling over. So even if he's indoors, outdoors, he's probably going to do that anyway. But that also can allow them to learn resilience if they fall. It's like that old thing, if you fall down, you pick yourself back up. Every time is a learning experience. Loved it. I love this Norwegian mentality and about the clothing, about it being too cold. I know that Norwegian saying it's something along the lines of, there's not bad weather, only bad clothing. So it's like, it's all, as long as they're wrapped up, big uh, big jackets, scarves, hats, they're fine, they won't be cold. And do you find it surprising that I'm asking you this? Uh, Maybe a little bit. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a foreign world for us to, to have uh, parents uh, thinking like that. In Norway, that's not uh, usual at all. It's normal to the kids have the kids are, outside. Yes. Hmm. Lovely. I'm staggered. <laughs> <laughs> we can focus on the kids and it's safe. It's really safe. We haven't had any uh, accidents. Uh, a bit, uh, some cutting and a bit, bit blood and things like that, but not uh, anything uh, it's that's, harmless. Uh, yeah, it's harmless. And they learn. That's mm. how they learn kids. Yeah, exactly. And they, they climb up in the top of the trees. And but we make sure everything is safe. Under, so if they fall down, we make sure there's no big stones or uh, small trees coming up, and so it's safe for them. Mm. And is it is it adults that tend to be the difficult ones about being outside? You know, that haven't got the right equipment, mm. and haven't got the right clothes. Yeah, it's not it's not a, a big issue in our kindergarten because uh, people that work for us they know that to work this place we have to go outside. And you don't find a, a younger generation who are more keen on handbags. Handbags, what's that? That's the things that you carry around as fashion accessories, ladies. No? Oh, you know, that, they are, that they are more... Uh, look, shoes, no, yeah, Oh, no, 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 no problem at all. We live in a part of the country that uh, fashion is like... Uh, and uh, gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you're and actually we... models. You are fashion models of gorgeous. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> Love <Lovely. laughs> Well, fashion models lead the way. Yep. So tell me, is this just a certain region of Norway or is this something that's replicated through all of Norway is this maybe like a more northern region something like that or what about in the cities like in Oslo do you still are children still allowed to go out and like have outdoor time like this yes, thank you thank you very much. <laughs> 
But waterproof clothing is no fashion accessory if you're outside all day. The Norwegians have a saying, there is no bad weather, only inappropriate clothing. And they're so right. Can you imagine then what it's like to live in a country that uh, doesn't let children out practically at all? I really can't. I can't imagine that. What do you Poor imagine? Kids. That's what I'm thinking. Yes. Mm. And, and what do you imagine will happen to them I, as adults? I think they, they are losing a lot of learning. And uh, especially when they are small, they are, loose, they are learning by f first hand. Not that somebody is telling you what to learn, but that you have to experience, experience. it yourself. Mm. And here out in the nature, they really can do that. We have science outside, they can touch the bugs, they can dig holes, they can make weather stations, and they Listen learn things bird song, by first hand. Really bird song, and they can smell the flowers. and, and uh, So one of our ground philosophies are that the foundation in small children are uh, motorical skills. Mm. Sorry, uh, are what? Motorical, um, to uh, be able to learn to run, to climb. Motor to skills. Motor, yeah. Is this called yes. that? Okay. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. And that, uh, that is the foundation. And when they have that on place, they can develop a lot easier. Mm. That's what I was going to say, is like, so many different skills. You can sit in a classroom, you can be colouring, you're just learning colouring, maybe some hand-eye coordination. I mean, you're outdoor playing, you're learning every second, like, is, can actually learn a lot more. And it's, having that mixture between indoor and outdoor is, like, the perfect combination. So and tell me, I understand that the Scottish Minister for Children was here. Yes. And was quite astonished to see the children using knives. Yes. <laughs> he was. <laughs> was he? he? Was, yes, he was astonished. And he uh, seemed to like it a lot. <laughs> he really did. Were you surprised? He was surprised. A little bit, but we have heard that uh, countries outside Norway uh, uh, don't let the kids do as much as we can do in With Norway. knives, particularly, With because <laughs> people see knives as weapons. Yeah. Yes. And that's uh, important for us to uh, learn them how learn how learn them how to use it. Mm. How, what a knife uh, what is a knife. for. Yeah, yeah that's, that's about teaching responsibility. I'll be honest, my son, again, we don't let him use the very sharp knife, so he can use the butter knife. We only let him use the safety scissors and things like that as well, but it's all about teaching responsibility, how to treat these things. As she mentioned, people in Scotland see knives as weapons, and when she said that, it really just clicked to me. It's actually a very sad state of affairs in Scotland that we see knives as weapons a lot of the time, rather than just what they are, just a kitchen utensil. Uh, you can really see the difference in mentality between Norway and Scotland there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, you can use it. And you don't have a big problem with knife crime here as a result no. of children using <laughs> knives when they're no, no, three? No. no, we don't. At all. They use the knife for uh, cutting uh, sticks from the trees and mm. making things and they and, really like to do that. And we're making it safe yeah. by uh, having an adult beside them all the time when they mm. are doing and doing it and uh, two, three at a time. And so and what, what did you say to the Scottish Children's Minister then? What was your message to him? About a bit, outdoors. A bit what, yeah, what we are telling you now that the, this is the foundation. This is learning by first hand, and uh, oh, we said a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Did you say get your children outside too? And we said well, what we're saying to you that we can't understand it being a problem, but mm. we don't know your country and how how things are there. So perhaps that is a question for us. Quite what are we so afraid of? that we're keeping our children out of this wonderful outdoors. Mm. Yeah, I really agree with that. That's a great documentary. I, I never really had it, knew it had a connection to Scotland, so really interesting to see that comparison as well, especially being from Scotland. But I love the Norwegian mentality, whether it's from the parents themselves or from the kindergartens, really just giving the kids more responsibility and teaching them to be responsible from such a young age. And it, the, it, the, like, the most important thing is the children having so much fun, man. That's the best thing to see them just out there playing in the snow together. Love to see that. Uh, tell me what you think about it. Does that reflect your experience, whether you are at kindergarten or your own children at kindergarten in Norway? Uh, and tell me what you think about this one. Thanks.